Hi, my name is Andreas. One of the things I run into quite a lot when I'm helping people with their Total projects or I'm teaching someone how to use Total is that a lot of people tend to slightly overuse variables in Total. So Total variables are these really powerful things where you can store information in either your component or your page. They're really fast, they're really flexible. You can do a ton of things with them, right? So they're really great, but there are some areas where they're not the best tool to reach for and where they can actually make having too many variables can make your components or pages sort of more complex to work with than they need to be, right? Uh, so I want to show an example here and we want to talk a little bit about uh, when we want to use a variable, when we don't want to use one, and what are some of the other tools that we can use instead. Here I've got a simple app. This is kind of a Rolodex style app. I can click an item in my list here and then it'll show this card with some of the uh, employee information, right? It's a really simple one just to showcase this example. Um, and so I've got some variables here. The first one I want to show briefly is the uh, users variable. And this just holds all the, the users in a list of objects, right? Um, this is mainly just to have some data to show. So we're not going to go too much into whether or not we need this variable. In a real scenario, maybe you would actually have this from an API instead. So you wouldn't need a variable. But there's also a lot of scenarios where variable makes sense. Um, so we're not going to focus too much on the user list at this point. Um, what I want to do instead and look at these three other variables. So I've got three variables here and they're all going to be set when I click one of these. So we can have a look at this list item and see there's this click event and then it's going to set all these three variables. It's going to set the index to be the index of the repeat item we're clicking on, the actual user from the repeat item, and we're just going to set show user card to true. So let's start with the show user card. So this variable right here only exists so that we can dictate when whether we actually should show this card, right? So you can see I've got a show hide formula here, and I can click on that, and we can see we have this show user card. So whenever, uh, by default, it's false, and we don't show the card, but when I then click one of these, it gets flipped over to true, right? And so this is a really good example of a variable that doesn't actually need to exist. And there's a really good test you can make to figure out if you have unnecessary variables in your project. And the rule is quite simple. It says, if the value of a variable can always at any given time be calculated or determined by the value of all the other variables or all the other information in your system, then that variable is essentially unnecessary. And so in this case, the show user card is false when we start, and then when you click on an element, it gets true. But then so does the selected user and the user index for that matter. So in this case, when I'm clicking the selected user and turning that on, I'm also always turning this uh, to true. And when the selected user is null, this is always going to be false. And therefore, we, we don't really need it because it's just duplicating the same information. It's not 100% the same, but we can easily calculate what the user card should be if we know the value of selected user. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to quickly refresh to clear all the current and states of all the variables. Now we can see said user card is false, selected user is null. Uh, so we can actually go and just delete this show user card. And then on this div, we're going to change this to be our selected user. And since we've done that, we get a little warning down here that says, oh, cannot set unknown variable show user card. So since we deleted the variable, we should also delete it from here. Um, and so now if I click Jacob, for example, the card's still there, right? It still works. It's still got, like it still toggles it correctly because our show height formula will interpret null as false and any object or any other information other than false or null, any other value is true. And so we can just swap in selected user and we really don't need that extra variable. And getting rid of a variable is quite valuable because it's an extra thing you have to remember to do. So uh, right now, it's, we only actually need to set it when we click this list item. But let's say we added like a, a dialogue for adding a new employee. And maybe once you did that, you want that to be the selected one. Well, then you would have to remember not just to set when you're done with that um, dialogue and create the user. You have to not just set the selected user, not just the selected user index. But you also have to remember to set the show user card. And now you have these three steps you need to do that really didn't need to be. 
and in complicated apps and complicated systems, that, that's really easy to forget, right? So the fewer variables we have almost, the easier it becomes to work with. Now, that already simpli simplified our application a little bit, but we can actually do better. So, so now we have this selected user and selected user index. And just to understand why we have them, let's have a look at our app here. If I click on Eric, I can actually use my arrow key to change the selection up and down to be another uh, user here, right? or an, another employee. The way that works is if I go in on my list here, I have this key down event. And it basically says, well, if the if this is an arrow up, and we can see if the key here is arrow up, um, then go and update the selected user and select user index. If it's arrow down, update the these value. And you can see here, if we go uh, the selected user index, what we do is we're subtracting one if the arrow is up. So we're moving up the list, which means technically, yeah, well, it means up the list technically down to render the index number, item number zero first, and then the other one, right? Uh, so we're subtracting one from the selected index, and then we're just making sure that it doesn't go below zero here with the max. So like if you're at the first item, which is index zero, and you press up, it should just stay at index zero, right? So that's what we're guaranteeing here. And then once we've done that, we, we go and add set the selected user after. Now, if we didn't know what the selected user index was, we wouldn't be able to figure out how to move it up one, right? Or move it down like like this up and down. What is the next one? We need to know what the index in the array is uh, for this to work. So in this case, um, we're, we're keeping that. Like we need to, we need both the information of the user index, and of course we need the selected user line. Right? Um, but if we run the same test again, uh, we know that well. Can I figure out the selected user based on the other data information that's available? Well, if I have the list of users and I have the right index, I can always get that item out of the list. So I really don't need the selected user. And actually, conversely, I can also say if I know what the selected user is, I can always extract that from the user list if I know the selected index. So I don't need both of them. I can actually get rid of them. And which one should you then get rid of? Um, that actually depends a little bit on the scenario. Um, there are some cases where it makes sense to store the index and some cases where it makes sense to store user. Um, in this case, I want to store the index. So we'll get rid of the user. And I'll explain in a, li in a little while why I chose the index. But for now, we'll just go through and get rid of the uh, user. So I'm going to refresh and reset all my variables here. And I'm going to delete this uh, selected user. But I'm not just going to delete it. I'm actually going to put in a formula instead that's called the same thing, right? Um, oh. Oh, there we are. Right. And we're going to calculate this by saying users and then get, oh, and we're going to select the user index. And I'm just going to change here on my list item quick. I'm just going to delete this bit where I'm setting the selected user because I don't need that anymore. So now we've gone and removed this from three variables down to, to one, right? Um, and so we can see here in my selected, if I just try and click a user and look at my selected user formula, that you can see it actually gets that out. So I'm getting the same value, but now I've moved this information from a variable to a formula. And the big benefit here is that if I change the other variables, this value automatically updates. So if any of the information in my user list changes, the selected user is going to change. If I change the index, my selected user formula is going to change. And this happens without me having to do anything. There's no, I don't have to remember to update anything. It's always going to point to the right value. Um, so before, because I started refactoring my app, I now have all these errors because I deleted a variable. So now I have to go and fix these. Uh, in total, when you do leave a variable, we actually leave all the references to it. And there's a really good reason for that because in this case, I didn't remember all the places I need to fix this. Right? These are all the places I need to fix my app now. And um, if, if, if total just removed that reference to like the set variable, like it, there's no way total knows that's the right thing. Maybe you want to replace something, which we actually do in a lot of places. Uh, so in this case, um, well, we've got an unused component formula here. We don't need to worry too much about that. Um, 
right here we can see the first example is we've got a selected user and this is actually for our show formula uh, here we can see that here so i'm just going to change that to be selected user instead i'm just going to swap that in and then that's kind of solved right uh, and the next one we can do here is here we're getting the selected user name uh, for the value here i'm going to swap that out with our selected user formula and then use get name i'm just going to copy this because i'm going to need it in a second uh, with the other one here with this the paragraph here we're getting the role I'm going to paste that in place and say roll, right? And let's see what else we had. Uh, cannot set unknown variable selected user. Here in our key down event for the list where we're moving up and down. We don't need this anymore. And so we're getting rid of quite a lot of stuff by reducing the number variable. And the bit we put in instead is actually not more complicated, right? We only added one new thing was this selected user formula. Everything else is sort of more or less the same, right? Um, and that was all our issues, right? So if we test this again, everything still works. Uh, our application still works exactly like it should. Um, the card is hidden until it's gone. So we've, we've maintained all our functionality, but we actually made this page significantly simpler. We went from four variables down to two, and we actually got rid of a lot of the complexity, a lot of the actions we're doing, right? So it's really worth going through your variables and saying like, does this need to exist? And the test here is always, can I, can I always calculate the value at any given time? Can I calculate the value of this given I know the other, right? And so you can see in this case, we can't reduce it any further. If I remove the user list, there's not going to be anything to show, right? If I reduce the selected user index here, there's no way for me to know which one to show in the cart, right? So I'm at my minimum now. I can't reduce it to fewer. Uh, technically, I can store both of these pieces of information into one variable, but that doesn't actually help me with complexity, right? You could technically get to the, down to one, but what we care about here is the uh, number of information, really, that you're storing. Like we could, I could technically, you know, go and say like, you couldn't make like a data, well, can't. a data variable uh, that has like, you know, uh, both the sort of like selected index here, right? Um, something and users. So like technically here, okay, we are, and then you only ever update the user part of this. Right? Like, so yeah, you can, in, in effect, you can always return any components variable count down to one. That doesn't make your life easier, right? There's no reason to do that. The point is here, how many pieces of information are you storing in your component. In this case, like two is the right amount, right? We can't get low on that. Now, I promised I would show you um, why I think it made more sense to use the index rather than selected user. This does a little bit depend on the case, but let's say in this case, we want to, uh, instead of having this paragraph, I actually want to add in an input. Um, I'm going to add in an input uh, element instead. And um, Let's see, go to styling and say I'm going to change my background color a bit because that's a bit aggressive. Um, we're going to change this color a bit. Okay, so let's say I'm going to take this input uh, and then I'm going to set that to be, I'm actually just going to set it to this value, so I'm just going to copy it again. Um, to the input. Um, and then when I change this, right, uh, this will be on our change event. I want to update the value, like the role of that uh, employee. So I can quickly just demote or promote people uh, when I'm when I'm on a whim, right? Um, so in this case, if I had the selected user variable, I would actually still need to update things in two places. I would still need to update the selected user, but I would also need to update the data inside the list because otherwise, if I clicked away and selected this again, it would sort of ignore the data in the selected user variable. Like the second I click on like another user over here, my selected user gets overridden. Um, so by using the index, I'm actually making sure again that I'm not duplicating the same data. Um, and this is kind of the same principle. You don't want to. You always want to reduce the number of variables um, to the lowest amount. And ideally, you don't want the same information in two different variables either, right? 
So the more simple you can keep it, the more minimum amount of information you can store in variables, generally the easier life gets. So in this case, uh, I'm going to update the users here um, because the selected user doesn't change. And I'm just going to say users, um, and I'm going to set. Uh, and in this case, <clears throat> there's a little trick in Toddle. Uh, if you don't know, we can use a array to set a property that's sort of deeply nested inside either array or object or a combination of both. So in this case, I'm going to use first the selected index. And we're going to set that to our event target value. <clears throat> and so if we see here, right, we're setting like the item one to value that's not exactly what we want so we can add one more to array here and say roll and now it keeps the object at item one but it only sets the roll to value so that like the little array here to use for set can be really really useful it's much much simpler than having to use like multiple sets and it becomes a much more complicated formula without it, right um and so now that I've done that, I can actually go here on my, um, why is my input Casper? Oh, that's because I put the input as, uh, I think I put the input as the name, and that should be the role, right? So um, now here, if I change my input, uh, go to test mode, and I say, well, actually, he's going to be um, engineer now. Oh, congratulations, Casper. I can change that here. It'll change the variable, like the actual dates and the user list. And even if I click away to another one, go back to Casper, like his role is now updated in the user list with sort of my or like source of truth, if you will, of that information. So using a selected user variable in this case would mean that I had the same information in two places. And if I needed to update it, I would have to update it in two places for it to work. So it makes a lot more sense here to actually use the index as a key here in this case to figure out well which one is the one that's currently selected. I hope that made sense uh, and I hope that was helpful. It's a little bit more of an advanced video. So if you're brand new to Toddle, this might not have made a whole lot of sense to you. Go check our intro uh, tutorials again and then, then come back once you've gotten into building with Toddle. Um, but for more advanced users that have been playing around with Toddle for a while, I think this can really help you simplify your components and pages and making them much, much easier to work with. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you haven't tried out Toddle, you're still just uh, watching our videos, go give it a try. It's free and it's really fun to play with. Uh, make sure you join our Discord and show us what you've built. Thank you.